In this video, we will be reviewing the project grid, opening a project, and navigating a project. Access the project grid from under the My Projects menu item on the left. If any of these conditions are true, you will have access to this projects list. One, you're a project manager. Two, you're assigned tasks on a project. Or three, you have a security role that gives access to projects. Otherwise, you will not have access to this functionality or menu item, and will need to speak to your system administrator. The purpose of the project grid is to provide the user with a list of all the projects they are either managing or part of. And projects can be opened by clicking on the name or clicking on the ID. At the top of the screen are a series of predefined filters to help you navigate large lists of projects. These include projects you're managing, these are projects where you're assigned to the project management role, projects where you, I'm the customer, so these are projects where you are the customer in the customer role, my open projects, this is where projects are in a state that is equal to active, my closed projects where the state is equal to closed, all projects and projects created by me. We can add columns to the grid by clicking on the downward chevron on any of the columns and adding our new columns. We can then sort our columns by clicking on the column header and dragging it to the desired location. We can filter most of the columns by clicking on the downward chevron selecting the filter and filtering it. We can create a cumulative filter by filtering on more than one column. For example, we'll filter on unassigned. We now have a filter that has a work container as internal, where the type of project is unassigned. We can now take this filter, click on our personalized button, give it a unique name, save those changes, and they will show up in our project filters list. When we want to get rid of that, we just click on the X. You can set a custom filter as your default filter by clicking on the checkbox next to the filter name. The next time we open up the project grid, this filter will be the default filter. In our case, we're going to leave our filter as My Open Projects. The pie chart in the task column shows us quickly how many open or closed tasks we have. In the ID number field, we have a series of graphics in color. We have red, green, and we have gray, or black. The red project graphic tells us that the number of charged hours to task is less than 75% of the assigned hours, while the green tells us that the charged hours is greater than 90% of assigned hours and the black tells us that there are no assigned hours for any task in the project. This completes our examination of the project's grid. Now we'll review the project itself. Open up a project by clicking on either the ID or the name. The project will open up in its own tab and you can open up multiple projects and have multiple tabs running at the same time. Let's review the navigation of a project our first screen is our overview where we have our task stats and our ticket stats. And we've reviewed these before in our project dashboard. What we do have that's different is we have a progress area which shows us how many tasks have been completed, how many are on our critical path, and how many tickets have been completed. You can use these as filters when they have values in them and they will take you directly to the corresponding area. For here, this would be tasks. For here, this would be tickets. We'll click on the update side of things, and we'll see that there's an update function that we've seen in tickets and tasks before. When you do an update here, it's not directly related to any task or ticket, but it's at the project level. 
So this would be a perfect place for you to capture time as a project manager. Of course, from here you can also upload files and you can set notifications. And you can click on this to edit the entire project. The project details tab gives us a summary of what is inside of the project. We've got our metrics from our Gantt chart, our initial description, our important dates, and our categorizations. From the roster tab, we have all of the folks who are going to be working on the project. You can see what their job titles are and their contact information. If we want to manage the roster, we click on the blue button, the project gets opened up and takes us directly to the rostering area. We take a look at the activity tab and we can see all of the activity that has been captured on this project. We take a look at tasks and these are all of the tasks that are on the project. You can't edit the tasks from here but you can view them and you can capture time against them. If the task is a summary task, as you can see here, you cannot capture any uh, time against this particular task, but you can make comments against it and set notifications and let people know what's going on. Uh, with our Gantt view, we can see the tasks that are listed along the left side and the Gantt chart that's listed along the right side. We can click a full screen Gantt view and get a larger view of the system. Let's go back to our normal view. We'll be digging into the Gantt in great detail in a video called the Gantt. Let's take a look at tickets. The tickets tab is a special queue for the project. Every project has its own ticket queue and all Issues, change requests, um, tickets, etc., can be captured against a particular project and then managed by the project manager. Our file section is where we would store all of the files that are associated with the project. Let's we'll click on this other project over here and see if there are any files. Any file can be stored against a project, it is simply a document storage area. We'll take a look at our time tracking. Any time that has been captured on the project in terms of work from any of the staff that are on their roster will show up here in the time tracking view. At the bottom of the view, you'll have a total of the total amount of time that's in the project. Our financials tab captures the benefits, budget, and costs in a number and a summary statement, as well as an area for us to put our documents so they can be accessed easily. These are isolated from our file section as the budgets, costs, and benefits may be of a more sensitive or confidential nature. So we've isolated them for you. And our status update, we want to do a status update to our project roster, our customers, or executives. We we'll perform our status updates here by clicking on the blue status update button. This pulls information from the project into this report allows us to update a number of fields, save our changes, and then distribute the document amongst our peers and executives and customers. That's it for this video. Our next video will be creating a project.